Hello, welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the Inquisition Warband from Kill Team Ashes of Faith, show you how I assembled them, any tips and tricks I learned along the way, show you my conversions that I've done to make the other operatives that you can't make from a single box, and generally give my overall review and thoughts on the set. So we're going to start with the, uh, the first model, which is the Interrogator who can also be built as the uh, Enlightener. So on the left of your screen there, you can see the uh, Interrogator basically assembled as per the instructions. Um, there's not a lot really to go through with the assembly for most of these models. They're very, very simple pieces that are put together really, really easily. If you look at the instructions on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that the first stage is to glue the front and back of the body together. And then this is the common body that would be for both the interrogator and the enlightener. And then you can see in the blue, you've got the steps to build the interrogator. And in the green, you've got the steps required to build um, an enlightener. In terms of the interrogator, the only thing I really need to do, I, did, uh, I didn't drill the barrel all the way through, but I did do a little dimple in the barrel so it should look right when it's, when it's painted. Um, and I've used the new boarding actions basing set. I decided I was going to do my inquisition on uh, kind of Hive City or, uh, you know, uh, boarding patrol style basing. Um, so, so there's that as well. In terms of the enlightener, so what I've tried to do with all of these guys is use up all the spare bits. So if you build this um, set as advertised, you end up with loads of spare bits. So I've used the two arms, the head, and uh, around the back, you can't see in the picture, but around the back there's also the little detail bit A47, the, the little belt bit that the, the uh, Enlightener has. And I've used all of those on a, um, a body from the Redemptionists. So the Cordor Redemptionists are a, a Necromunda gang. I think you get five in a box with loads of bits. I was lucky in that Zimbad had bought that box for some Gene Stealer cult conversions and had actually had three spare bodies of which I've used two here uh, in the end. I thought I was going to use three. I ended up using two. So this is just the body from a, a Redemptionist with the extra bits from uh from the sprue now i did sort of file down you can see the remnants of it you won't see it when it's painted i did file down and remove the noose because uh the noose is a very like redemptionist um symbol and i just wanted him to look like a kind of slightly mad in generic imperial zealot and then i found some ancient uh brass etch uh, inquisition brass etch so he's got you can just about see it in my photograph he's got a inquisitional eye emblazoned on the front of his um sort of robes there because the actual redemptionists if you build them according to their instructions they all have like mantles um and this guy doesn't have his mantle over the top of his is is his, his uh torso so it's a little bit flat there so i just included that piece of brass edge so moving on to the tome skull really simple little miniature you just glue the skull onto the onto the mechadendrites and the mechadendrites onto the base I thought about trying to get rid of the piece of, like, dirt or earth that the mechadendrites have moulded onto the bottom of them. But I was really worried about my ability to cut that away and not damage the mechadendrites. But I've put him on the, um, I've put him on the boarding patrol base there with a bit of... You get a couple of bits of junk as well on the boarding patrol base sprues. So, because he's such a tiny model, I put a bit of junk there on the sprue just to kind of spruce that up. And I'll just paint the little pile of dirt in nondescript colors and try not to draw people's eye to it but it does bother me a little bit but um yeah i wasn't confident with trying to cut that away without damaging the little tendrils so then we got the auto savant um auto savant's really interesting because he's a a sort of hollow uh, a four-sided hollow shape these miniature if you've ever built malifaux miniatures these miniatures start to feel a lot like Malifaux models in a couple of ways. It does feel... Some of them do feel like they're another company's models. And by that, I mean, let's just go back to the first slide here. Can you see how much chunkier the Enlightener conversion is than the Interrogator? The Interrogator is very, very small on his base and very willowy for a Games Workshop miniature. He looks far more like something that Malifaux or a similar company will put out. 
Whereas the Redemptionist body there, I mean, I don't think it looks too awful because, you know, he got big billowy robes. But the, if you look at his feet, the Enlightener has massive feet, right? Because, and the Redemptionist, and this is not like an old kit from the 90s. This is a pretty modern plastic kit for Necromunda. The Inquisition guys, I don't dislike them, but they are weirdly scaled, right? So to get back to the Auto Savant, it's a very small, willowy figure. Really nice figure, actually. I think really, really good. Um, harkens back to some classic illustration as well. I really enjoy the miniature. Interestingly, he comes with a choice of faces. So you can see that up in the top right-hand corner of the instructions. You can have either face A53 or face A54. Um, one is like a monocle, which is the one I went for. And one has like spectacle type things, which is the other one. I'm not sure why they included an option here to have two different faces. It's not as if you can have two different auto savants in your team. And it's not even as if the different faces are particularly visible because of the angle of the miniature. I think they would have been better served using the space on there for a second head for the servitor. Because if you were building this um, team as you kind of are supposed to in inverted commas by buying two boxes, you'd end up with two servitors, so it would be great to have them in two different heads. But apart from that, uh, probably the most complicated model to build. Not particularly complicated, but just getting those pieces to line up so that it was, um, you know, trying to assemble the body around that void is a little bit difficult. So then we got the Pistolier and the Quest Keeper. So the Pistolier I assembled stock. I absolutely love the Pistolier model. I um, I think it's by far the best model in the set. I think they could release that Pistolier model as a character for like £28 or something. As like an Inquisition, uh, Inquisition agent that could be had by any Imperial team. And I think people would buy it. I think it is a really, really lovely sculpt. Really adds something to the fabric of 40k. Really big fan of the, the Pistolier there. Um, so, again, you can see you build the body, and then we, we add on the different bits, depending on whether we're building a Pistolier or uh, a Quest Keeper. Um, the Quest Keeper was the conversion that gave me the most difficulty, because as you can see from the stock Pistolier, she, she's she got like an armoured chest uh, piece, um, and then robes, and but then there's... I wanted something to kind of resembled the silhouette of that fusion of robes but also armored bits and then the the quest keeper's arms are like these um kind of half naked but then gloved arms in the end after raiding my bits box and going through and basically tearing my house apart trying to get to all the places where there are bits of warhammer miniatures secreted i settled on using a conversion using the uh Tempestor Scions with the Tempestor bits, so she's got the coat, which is normally for the the general of your uh, your your Scion detachment, right? Um, as to why the plastic is green, okay, the OGs know because this is from the 2018 Kill Team. Um, sort of, you got five Scions and some crates in a box. Uh, it Drop Force Imperator. It's from there. Um, and I don't know why I, I had these sprues with just two bodies left on them. I don't know why I'd bought them and had to build three scions from that kit. And I think I had some other scions and it was a whole thing there uh, back in back in the day. But I had this knocking around so I was able to convert this up. I think the conversion looks okay. Um, I'll have to see when it's painted. This is the one I was least sure of. I'm not sure it really makes sense. She's fighting with a big... Or he, I'm not quite sure, fighting with a big uh, eviscerator, but then also wearing a big long floppy coat. But I think it'll look cool when it's painted up. And a little bit of brass etch there as well on the arm, just to put an Inquisitional logo on, on the arm and the jacket there as well. Okay, moving on. Oh, do let me know in the comments what you think about the conversions, because honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, so we got the Death World Vet and the Penal Legionnaire. So again, the Death World Vet is the one I chose to assemble as per stock. Well, more or less, he did come with a tactical rock under his raised foot. I decided to get rid of the tactical rock and use some of the detritus from the basing kit to make him, to pose him in a more industrial environment. I think that's worked really, really well. He looks really, really lovely. Uh, really enjoy that that kit. Uh, along with the pistol here, I think he's one of the better uh, miniatures in this in this set by far and then the penal legionnaire is uh, so my wife plays um briefly we didn't really play much necromunda but she has an orlock gang 
and she had two spare unbuilt Orlock gangers, so I asked if I could have one. Um, now, I did quite a lot of work with this guy. I had to kind of shave down the front of his torso quite a lot because I wanted to get the, the chain tabard from the Penal Legionnaire on there. Now, the Orlock is a little bit taller than the stock... Um, than the stock miniature is, so I had to kind of split the tab out of the waist a little bit to get it on, uh, patch that with a bit of green stuff and another piece of brass etch to try and just cover some of the slightly rough green stuff. The arms and the head and those scrolls you see to the left hand side are all from the um, are all from the, the the kit, the Penal Legionnaire kit from the Ashes of Faith box, and then I just added a long purity seal which is from the uh, Sisters Repentia. Because I slightly messed up like the shoulder pad and that side of the torso. And purity seals are just the best for covering up little bits of conversion that don't quite look brilliant, right? Quite pleased with him, actually. I think he looks really good. I think painted up, he'll look really good. And he certainly will look better, right? This is the thing with all these conversions. Even though I'm not 100% happy with them, I think it will certainly look better than having two guys on the tabletop, each with their foot up on the same identical rock and in the same identical pose i really don't like this kit for that reason like i actually a lot of people don't like the models full stop i actually really like most of the models for the inquisition kill team but i dislike their decision that if you want to have full inquisition or if you just decided that you know death will veteran and penal legionnaire were two things that you wanted to run they'd look so identical so as as weird as I am at my conversions, I do think the conversion will look better than having two stock miniatures in the same pose, right? Now, something that doesn't look better are these guys, the gun servitors. So, the gun servitors really a struggle because if you have one box and you're trying to convert enough to make a full Inquisition team where you don't need to take any um, support operatives, you don't have a body for the gun servitor. Um, so... Right, we'll talk about the plastic gun servitor first. I assembled him as the plasma cannon because the plasma cannon just seems like the one you want to take almost all of the time. Um, really like the servitor model. I really enjoy that on the right hand side, or like on on his on the on the right hand side of his chest there, you can see there's a British plug socket right for plugging in your appliances. I think that's an amazing touch. I'm a, a big fan of 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 the servitor in that regard. Now, I had an old metal servitor in the bottom of a cupboard under the stairs from my childhood. I stripped off the paint as best as I could, and I've mounted him on a silly base. So this is a, um, first of all, the 38mm base from the, from the, from the, uh, the basing kit has a blank 38mm base glued on the bottom of it upside down. And then on top of that 38mm base, there's a couple of pieces of detail from the basing kit. And between all those things, the metal servitor stands at the correct height compared to the plastic servitor. So I'm quite happy that he's a legal gaming piece. But, like, that metal servitor, admittedly in Citadel Finecast, like, if you go to the shops and you want to buy a servitor with some tech with tech marine... Those are the servitors you still get. There, you know, there are there is not a nice set of plastic new servitors for forty k. We really could do with one. Uh, the only other servitor that's as nice as the one in this set is the one from Blackstone Fortress, from the famous Blackstone Fortress expansion pack that I don't have. There's a servitor who actually has like a grav cannon on his shoulder. Now, if I had access to that model, I would just use it and I would just say, "Oh, the grav cannon counts as a multi melter. It's fine." right but i don't want to pay the 30 odd quid that the secondary market is asking for that servitor um so i've got this little stunty metal guy and i'll paint him up to the best of my ability and hopefully my opponents will not complain like i've raised him up to the right height to be a legal gaming piece but yeah it's not uh it's not ideal it's not ideal like for all the other conversions are good this doubling up on the servitor thing is not not ideal um in terms of the servitor if you only wanted one servitor you could uh make it so that you could swap out the melter the heavy bolter and the plasma cannon i actually can't see a world in which you're taking only one servitor and don't want the plasma cannon i could be wrong on that maybe the melter gun has some specific cases where it's better but um really like the plasma cannon so i opted not to do that so i do have the spare nozzles still on the sprue Right, the Mystic and the Hex Assist. So I decided to build the Mystic because I think the Mystic fits better uh, on that body anyway. It looks more like uh, what it what it should be. 
Um, really actually quite like the detail of the Mystic. I love the blindfolded head. You know, the eyes burnt out from the soul binding, this sort of thing. The dangling skull and the nice tabard. I do just think it's, again, another example of would you really want two models on that exact same body? They look really weird next to each other with the same skull. So, again, for the Hex Assist, it's another conversion based on a Redemptionist. This one looks really, really good because I was able to put on the Hex Assist's mantle like rather than on one of the redemptionist mantles and then just needed a little bit of green stuff and trimming around the neck to make the head go on properly other than that really simple conversion really straightforward you can again see that the um you know the redemptionist is a fair bit more chunky than the the uh, inquisition miniatures and that maybe it looks does look a little weird but I'm really pleased with how that conversion came out. Uh, again, in terms of actually assembling the stock kit, there's really nothing to it. Very simple build uh, process. And that's really it. So let's have my final thoughts. Um, I really, really like some of these models. You know, they get a lot of they get a lot of stick online from various people. But you know, the Mystic I think is a really cool miniature. Uh, the Gun Servitor really cool miniature. Like. The, 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 the Death World Veteran is really, really cool. Uh, harks back to Inquisitor. The Pistolier, I think, is amazing and could be sold as a character sculpt. Um, the Auto Savan, again, I think is actually an amazing miniature based on a really old piece of art. I mean, the, the, the problem they have miniature-wise is that the Interrogate is a bit, like, generic, right? The Candle of that is a nice touch, but the Interrogator is a bit generic. So, actually, I don't think the miniatures are bad, except that having to double up if you were doubling up they'd look bad because of all the repeated sculpts i think and there is this weird thing with the sculpt i think the, the inquisition models look quite thin and willowy and more realistically proportioned in the way of some other games i've said malafar a few times they do remind me of malafar models so when you do conversions with other bits in your collection those things are going to look a bit different because they're more heroically scaled even like Necromunda Redemptionists are not an old kit. But as I've said a couple of times, I'm pleased with most of my conversion work. I think they look better than the team would look with repeated bodies anyway. But I, I these days, you have to say it, I actively invite your critique in the comments. If you think they look crap, please tell me. Like, I'm not going to go off my rant again about how everyone's scared to give anyone else feedback. But actively feedback, thank you, would like that, yeah. The Servitor I would definitely replace in a heartbeat. If Games Workshop came out with a new Tech Marine that had plastic Servitors, I'd buy them and use one of the new Servitors in this. I just don't want to buy a whole second Inquisition team just for a Servitor. Do let me know your thoughts down below on the whole thing. I I'd love to see it. Um, you know, please consider joining the Discord where we're currently running a Kill Team Hobby Challenge for the Inquisition team. And in uh, August, we're going to go through everybody's painted entries. Um you know, and have a little bit of a competition so you could take part there. There are some more pictures of my team on the thread there. There are some pictures of other people's stuff there. Hopefully that'll be a really good community experience. Obviously, if you like the video, please like it. If you if you if you subscribe, that'd be great. And if you can and if you become a YouTube channel member, well I mean then you get things like early videos, uh behind the scenes videos click the join channel button and there's a video that will tell you that kind of give you the pitch as to why you should consider doing that as well all those things very much appreciated thank you so much and i hope you have a great rest of your day whatever it is you might be doing today bye bye